Welcome to IT Parshala. This video is the sixth part of HTML module. Before you continue, you should have studied the earlier parts of this module. Please visit our video library at www.itparshala.com. In this video, we shall learn the usage of CSS display and visibility properties, CSS float, CSS positioning, CSS hyperlinks, and CSS layers. CSS display and visibility. The display property specifies how an element is displayed and the visibility property specifies if an element should be visible or hidden. Hiding an element. Hiding an element can be done by setting the display property to none or the visibility property to hidden. However, note that both the methods produce different results. Visibility property set to hidden hides an element but it still takes up the same space as before and still affects the layout. Let's look at an example. Display property set to none hides an element and does not take up the same space. The page displays as if the element was not there. Let's take up an example. Block and inline elements. A block element is an element that takes up the full width available and has a line break before and after it. Examples of block elements are h1 p div an inline element only takes up as much width as necessary and does not force line breaks examples of inline elements are span and a changing how an element is displayed changing an inline element to a block element or vice versa can be useful for making the page look in a specific way and still follow web standards the following example displays list items as inline elements. Following example displays span elements as block elements. CSS positioning. The term CSS positioning refers to using CSS to position elements on your HTML page. CSS allows you to position any element precisely where you want it to be. You can specify whether you want the element positions relative to its natural position in the page or absolute based on its parent element. Relative positioning to determine whether the element will be positioned relatively or absolutely, you use the position property. To perform relative positioning in CSS, you set position property to value relative, followed by the desired offset from either top, right, bottom or left. Following example offsets the element 80 pixels from the left of where it would have been. If we had specified top, it would appear 80 pixels below where it would have been. It's important to note that other elements are not affected by this element's offset. Therefore, overlapping may occur and you should keep an eye. Let us look at an example to understand it. Absolute positioning. Absolute positioning can be very useful for creating advanced layouts and cool visual effects such as overlapping elements to present a layered effect. To perform absolute positioning in CSS, you use the position property. This time, you set the value of the position property to absolute, followed by the desired offset. Let's look at an example. Absolutely positioned elements are removed from the normal flow. The document and other elements behave as if the absolutely positioned element does not exist. Absolutely positioned elements can overlap other elements. Fixed positioning. Fixed positioning allows you to fix the position of an element to a particular spot on the page, regardless of scrolling. Look at the following example. How elements float. 
An element can float only left or right, not up or down. A floated element will move as far to the left or right as it can. Usually this means all the way to the left or right of the containing element. The elements after the floating element will flow around it. If an image floats, the text flows around it accordingly. CSS float. The CSS float property enables you to determine where to position an element relative to the other elements on the page. When you use the float property, other elements will simply wrap around the element you applied the float to. In the following example, we have set a div element to float left, which would result in the rest of the content wrapping around it. Floating elements next to each other. If you place several floating elements one after other, they will float next to each other if there is room. In the following example, we have made an image gallery using the float property. CSS Horizontal Align Aligning Block Elements A block element is an element that takes up the full width available and has a line break before and after it. Examples of block elements are as follows H1, P and Div. In this chapter we will learn how to horizontally align block elements for layout purposes. Center Aligning Using the Margin Property Block elements can be aligned by setting the left and right margins to auto. Actually, setting the left and right margins to auto specifies that they should split the available margin equally so that the result is a centered element. Look at the following example to understand it. left alignment using the absolute property. Let's try to understand this with the help of an example. Right alignment using the position property. Let's take up an example to understand this. left alignment using the float property. Let's try to understand this with the help of an example. Right alignment using the float property. Let's try to understand this with the help of an example. CSS hyperlinks. In this lesson, we will learn how to set different properties of a hyperlink using CSS. Hyperlinks can be set using the following properties. The A link property signifies unvisited hyperlinks. The A visited property signifies visited hyperlinks. The A hover property signifies an element that currently has the user's mouse pointer hovering over it. The A active property signifies an element on which the user is currently clicking. Usually these all properties are kept in the header part of the HTML document. However, please remember that a A hover property must come after A link property and A visited property in the CSS definition in order to be effective. Also, A active property must come after a hover property in the CSS definition as shown in the following example.
setting the color of links. Following example demonstrates how to set the link color. Possible values could be any color name in any of the valid formats. Changing the color of a link. Following example demonstrates how to change the color of a link when we mouse over that link. Possible values could be any color name in any of the valid formats. Changing the color of active links. Following is an example of how to change the color of active links. Possible values could be any color name in any of the valid formats. CSS layers. In CSS, layers refer to applying the z-index property to elements that overlap with each other. The z-index property, when used in conjunction with the position property, lets you specify which element should appear on top in the event of an overlap. An overlap can easily occur when using the position property and this is often desirable when creating advanced layouts. Let us take up an example to understand this. So, this wraps up the CSS tutorial. Congratulations for making it to the end. In this complete tutorial, we learned that CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets and that it is used for applying styles to web pages. We also learned how to code and implement CSS using the inline, embedded and external methods. We learned about classes and IDs before applying styles such as font, backgrounds, borders, margins and more. We then covered the more advanced topics such as position, float and align which allows us to create cool layouts. For more videos, please visit our library at www.itparchala.com.